हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल ऑन इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस इंट्रोडक्शन टू हाइपरबोलिक फंक्शंस वी विल सी डेफिनेशन ऑफ हाइपरबोलिक फंक्शंस एंड देयर आइडेंटिटीज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल सी द प्री रिक्विसाइट इन प्री रिक्विसाइट वी विल रिकॉल द डेफिनेशन ऑफ सर्कुलर फंक्शन एंड यूलर्स फॉर्म ऑफ दीज सर्क्युलर फंक्शन सर्कुलर फंक्शंस आर द फंक्शंस व्हिच सैटिस्फाइज इक्वेशन ऑफ अ सर्कल x2 y2 1 फॉर एग्जांपल cos x एंड sin x आर सर्कुलर फंक्शंस यूलर्स एक्सपोनेंशियल फॉर्म ऑफ द सर्कुलर फंक्शन इज गिवन एज cos x is equal to e raised to ix plus e raised to minus ix upon 2 and sin x is equal to e raised to ix minus e raised to minus ix upon 2i from sin x and cos x exponential form one can find out tan x exponential form so tan x can be given by sin x upon cos x that is minus i into e raised to i x minus e raised to minus i x upon e raised to i x plus e raised to minus i x you can pause the video and check the calculation now let us proceed with the definition of hyperbolic functions hyperbolic functions are defined similar to circular functions hyperbolic functions are the functions which satisfies equation of the hyperbola say x square minus y square is equal to 1 for example cos h x and sin h x are hyperbolic functions now let us see euler's exponential form of hyperbolic functions cos h x is defined as e raised to x plus e raised to minus x upon 2 and sin h x is defined as e raised to x minus e raised to minus x upon 2 then from sin h x and cos h x one can find what is tan h x tan h x is sin h x upon cos h x that is e raised to x minus e raised to minus x upon e raised to x plus e raised to minus x i hope you understood euler's exponential form of both hyperbolic functions and circular functions let me recall euler's exponential form for circular functions so you can compare them and remember now let us proceed with the relationship between circular and hyperbolic functions the very first relationship that we are going to study is sin h i x is equal to i sin x note that on left side we have hyperbolic sin function and on right side we have circular sin function let's prove this relation for that we consider left hand side which is sin h i x according to euler's exponential form sin h i x can be written as e raised to i x minus e raised to minus i x upon 2 now i will multiply and divide this by i so we have e raised to i x minus e raised to minus i x upon 2i into i but this expression is nothing but sin x so we are left with i into sin x hence sin h i x is equal to i sin x let us go for another relationship it states that sin i x is equal to i sin h x note that on left side you have circular sin function and on right side you have hyperbolic sin function let us begin with left side sin ix euler's exponential form is e raised to i into ix minus e raised to minus i into ix upon 2i i into i is i square and value of i square is minus 1 so here we will have e raised to minus x here you will have e raised to x upon 2i but 1 by i is minus i so this right hand side can be written as minus i into e raised to minus x minus e raised to x upon 2 now let us take out this minus sign so outside we will have i and inside we will have e raised to x minus e raised to minus x upon 2 which is sin h of x so we just proved that sin i x is equal to i sin h x similarly one can prove that 
cos h i x is equal to cos x and cos of i x is equal to cos h of x. I am leaving proof of this third and fourth identity or relationship to you. Now let us proceed with some identities of hyperbolic functions. Simultaneously, I am going to show you the corresponding identity in circular functions. So here first identity is cos h square x minus sin h square x is equal to 1. A similar kind of identity we have studied for circular functions which is cos square x plus sin square x is equal to 1. So there is a sign difference between these two identities. Let's prove this identity. For that consider LHS which is cos h square x minus sin h square x. Now let us take exponential forms of cos hx and sin hx. So we have on the other side e raised to x plus e raised to minus x upon 2 whole square minus e raised to x minus e raised to minus x upon 2 whole square. Let us expand these brackets treating this as a plus b the whole square and a minus b the whole square. So we have 1 by 2 square is 1 by 4 a square plus 2ab plus b square minus once again you will have 1 by 4 into a square minus 2ab plus b square. Now let us take out this 1 by 4 common. We see that this e raised to minus 2x and e raised to minus 2x gets cancelled. Similarly, this e raised to 2x and minus e raised to 2x gets cancelled. So we left with only 1 by 4 into 4 which is 1. Hence, this identity is proved. Let us go ahead for next identity. Here we have to prove that e raised to x is equal to cos hx plus sin hx. Similar to the previous proof, we will begin with this RHS which is cos hx plus sin hx. Let us substitute the exponential forms of these functions like this. Now simplifying this, we see RHS becomes 2 times e raised to x upon 2 which is nothing but e raised to x which is the required LHS. Hence this identity is proved. Similarly, one can prove that sin h of minus x is equal to minus sin h of x and cos h of minus x is equal to cos h of x. To prove these identities, you have to use the exponential forms of sin hx and cos hx. These two identities proves that sin h of x is an odd function and cos h of x is an even function. Now let us proceed with few more identities. This time I will show you the comparative identity of the circular functions. So here the first identity is sec h square x is equal to 1 minus tan h square x. On the other side in circular functions we have identity sec square x is equal to 1 plus tan square x. You can clearly see the difference of sign. Cosec h square x is equal to cot h square x minus 1. And in circular functions, we have cos x square x is equal to cot square x plus 1. Next one is sin h of 2x is equal to 2 sin hx into cos hx. We have exact similar identity in circular functions, which says sin 2x is equal to 2 sin x into cos x. Another one is cos h 2x is equal to 2 cos h square x minus 1. Here we have cos 2x is equal to 2 cos square x minus 1. Even this identity is exactly similar. Another one is cos h 2x is equal to cos h square x plus sin h square x. But here you have cos 2x is equal to cos square x minus sin square x. There is a sign difference. Another one is cos h 2x is equal to 1 plus 2 sin h square x. And over here you have cos 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sin square x. Similarly, here tan h 2x is equal to 2 tan h x upon 1 plus tan h square x. But here tan 2x is 2 tan x upon 1 minus tan square x. Now few more are there. 
tan h of x plus minus y is equal to tan h x plus minus tan h y upon 1 plus minus tan h x into tan h y. This identity says that when you have plus sign here, you will have plus sign here and here. And for minus sign here, you will have minus sign here and here. But this is not the case in circular functions. In circular functions, tan x plus minus y is equal to tan x plus minus tan y upon 1 minus plus tan x tan y. That means when you have plus sign here, you will have plus and minus sign here. And for minus sign here, you will have minus sign here and plus sign here. I hope you understood the difference. Now few more identities are left. Sin h of x plus minus y is equal to sin h x into cos h y plus minus cos h x into sin h y. Exactly similar identity we have in circular functions which is this. Similarly, for cos h x plus minus y, you have cos h x into cos h y plus minus sin h x into sin h y. Note that when you have plus sign here, here also you have plus sign and for minus sign here, you have minus sign here. But in circular functions, signs are vice versa. For plus sign here, you have minus sign here and here for minus sign, you have plus sign here. These are some of the identities from hyperbolic functions. I hope guys you understood these identities of hyperbolic functions. I am not proving all of them but I have given you the idea to prove these identities. Now let us proceed with derivatives and integrations of some of the hyperbolic functions. Derivative of sin hx is cos hx. Derivative of cos hx is sin hx. But this is not the case in case of circular functions. In circular functions, derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Similarly, derivative of tan hx is sec h square x. So here, integrals are integration of cos hx dx is sin hx plus c. Integration of sin hx dx is equal to cos hx plus c. And integration of sec h square x dx is equal to tan hx plus c. These are the few derivative and integration identities of hyperbolic functions. I hope guys you understood what are hyperbolic functions, their relation with circular functions and their identities. In my next video, we will see examples based on hyperbolic functions. Till then, keep watching my videos. Thank you all of you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.